Uh, right now, though, Africa and the commonly held view that generous, wealthy countries give billions in aid to the continent, which they do. But a new report suggests that notion is actually a smokescreen for politicians and corporations to plunder Africa's vast resources. Take a look at this. Aid to Africa amounts to less than $30 billion a year with total inflows of $134 billion. However, $46.3 billion disappears each year in profits made by the multinationals who come in. Then $21 billion goes on debt payments, while illegal fishing and logging costs more than $18 billion. Put it all together and Africa's losing $192 billion a year, which is no good when you remember our inflows number of $134 billion. And that's all just what we can quantify. Who knows how much more is lost in illicit money, squirreled away in tax havens and money loans to other governments. The man behind this report is Martin Drury, Director of Health Poverty Action, joining us from London this week. Martin, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here and, and I'm condensing your report down into a handful of words, but the idea that this aid is a smokescreen for the plundering of these countries. Talk me through that one because it's, it's a fairly, well, it's quite a statement, let's put it that way. It is, and um, at Health Poverty Action, we were becoming increasingly concerned that whenever uh, development issues were discussed uh, in the media in the UK, the only message in the room, the only understanding in the room was that Africa is dependent on the charity of uh, uh, the, the global north, countries like the UK. And the only debate was whether or not at a time when we're going through hard times ourselves, mm. we can continue to be so generous to the poor. And at Health Public Action, of course, we know that that wasn't the whole truth, but we didn't have the figures to, to demonstrate it. So what we wanted to do was, uh, and we did this in partnership with a number of uh, both African and Northern NGOs, was to uh, quantify the uh, inflows to Africa and, and the outflows. And, and what it uh, clearly shows is that um, aid is a, a tiny proportion of the true picture. And that leads to uh, totally uh, false conclusions in terms of the understanding of the public, which in turn leads to the wrong kinds of political pressure. Okay, so uh, what could have, well, what sort of effect could this have? Because if already the perception is that money is just flowing in, wouldn't this possibly make that worse? You know, people will start saying, oh, well, you know, they're not even using the money properly anyway, so why should we be giving them any more? Well, it's not the question of whether or not the money's been used properly. And we're not saying that aid doesn't make a difference. Uh, I know that debate happens elsewhere. Um, we, we know that uh, aid can make a difference to the poor. What we're saying is that the money that uh, the rich world such as my own country, the UK, takes out of Africa far, far exceeds the amount that it gives back as aid. So if the perception is that actually in the UK we're the, the generous benefactors of Africa, it leads the public to totally different um, emotional relations and mm. intellectual relations, political understanding about the true relationship than if they know the truth that we're taking out more than we're giving. And the trouble with, uh, we describe aid as, as a smoke screen. The, tr the trouble is that um, if all the attention, and as NGOs, you know, we're responsible also. You know, we constantly, constantly campaign for more aid, ask for money to give public, as though that's the solution to poverty. And it's understandable if people are going through hard times themselves, they're mm. gonna get yeah. frustrated with that, that ongoing message. If instead we highlight attention on the reasons that money has been unfairly taken Africa, uh, out of Africa, illicit uh, tax dodging, uh, unfair um, burdens of uh, the distribution of uh, uh, unfair distribution of the burdens of climate change, debt repayments, unfair terms of trade, if that is brought to public attention, then instead, you know, I as a UK citizen don't feel irritated with Africa for being constantly reliant on my charity. I feel outraged at the causes of that mass poverty in the first place. Now, as NGOs, that's what we should be focusing attention on. Okay, so you've made some good points there about the illicit money, the sort of stuff that can't be controlled or tracked, or at least it's more difficult to control or track them. What about the money that goes out in the form of, of corporate profits, a company that is domiciled elsewhere, therefore the money goes there? I mean, that's what companies are there to do, no? Make a profit? Uh, well, they are there to turn a profit as an individual company, yes, but um, the, uh, one of the biggest outflows from Africa is the repatriation of profits by large multinationals. Now, um, 
the, those multinationals have very often benefited from uh, uh, biased rules that uh, uh, regulate international trade. Um, they've used their lobbying power and, uh, uh, you know, supported by the likes of the IMF, supported by, uh, uh, again, unfair trade negotiations at, uh, at the World Trade Organization, to allow them to dominate African markets with African governments being denied the same policy tools that governments like my own have used to develop um, the uh, uh, commercial strength of these multinationals in the first place, the, the right to protect our own markets while those companies are developing, the right to subsidize those companies until they become strong enough to compete. So it, you know, it, it's unfair that those, countries are able, those companies are able to uh, enter African markets dominate those markets and then repatriate the profits out of Africa back to the UK. Martin Drury, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for your time.